Hello, it's me. This is episode 25 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast and this is me in the future after I film the podcast to let you know that I've had to split it into two sections. I don't intend on doing this ever again. It's been a bit of a funny month for me and it will all be explained in the first five minutes of the podcast what's been going on and I had quite a lot to catch up on and I rambled and even with editing it couldn't be saved so I split it into two parts so in this first part you will see finished objects and my work in progress review and in the next episode well the next part part two which I will upload either later today or tomorrow you will see the winners of the Strictly Sock Along I will announce another giveaway and I've got some incoming bits and pieces and some other bits to talk about plus a vlog from the Waltham Abbey Wool Show so I hope you enjoy this part one and please come back for part two Welcome to episode 25 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali and I live in Kent in the UK with my husband and my two young daughters. And this is my podcast to talk about crochet and knitting and yarn and all of that good stuff. Um, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Ali. I think that's about it for the introductions. Uh, if you are new, and there are a few of you, welcome. Uh, I usually jump straight in, and all the stuff we're gonna talk about, and all the timestamps for those things are always underneath this video. So if there's anything you are particularly, particularly, <laughs> particularly interested in, you can jump uh, ahead to whatever section you like. Um, today I am going to talk about um, finished objects, of which I have eight, <laughs> which is what happens when, due to unforeseen circumstances, you don't podcast in about a month and a half. But I will get on to that in a moment. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about my works in progress, but I'm going to do a bit of a whip review. So I'm going to talk about my current works in progress, but I'm also going to talk about some of my longer term languishing projects as well and just work out what I'm going to do uh, with those. Um, I always try to be quite informative when I'm talking about my projects. I do try to include details on the patterns and my thoughts on, on things so hopefully that will all be interesting to you. Then we're going to talk about the Strictly Sock Along. It's all done and dusted for another year, well for its first year really. Um, I ran an accidental uh, cow for knitted or crocheted socks uh, made whilst watching Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, the main rule was to cheat <laughs> as much as you could and that was uh, really good fun and I'm going to announce the prize winners and I'm going to announce another little giveaway today as well so that's worth sticking around for. And then I'm going to talk about some incoming things. I've got quite a few things obviously because it's been Christmas and I've been to a yarn fair um, as well so I've got a few things to share with you I probably won't share everything because that might get a bit boring. I might save some for next time. And then I've got a little two, two or three minute vlog at the end from the Waltham Abbey Wool Festival, which I went to very last minute with my eldest daughter um, a couple of weeks ago now. So just going to take a sip of my tea. So if you are uh, not new, <laughs> if you are a returning viewer, you'll know that we usually get stuck straight into all the yarny good stuff but I've got a little something I want to say uh, before I get started so if you're not interested in a um, little bit of a uh, two minute chat about what's been going on and why it's been so long since I've podcasted then just skip straight ahead to the time that is on the screen now and uh, you can just give it a miss and you can get straight into finished objects but before for the, those of you hanging around before I get started I just wanted to say a very a uh, heartfelt thank you to everybody that left a comment or contacted me after my last January vlog. So I had intended to vlog throughout January, but then I think it was on the day seven, I think it was, um, my father was taken very ill and ended up in hospital and we thought it was a complication relating to his Parkinson's disease. So he's had Parkinson's disease for 10 years. Uh, but it turns out that he has cancer. 
So, and I was gonna, when I was planning what to say to you all, um, I was gonna say, you know, it's the C word. <laughs> and then I, sorry, I keep bashing my mug with my ring. Um, yes, yeah, so I was gonna say the C word, but then I had a little chat with myself and reminded myself that it's not Voldemort. <laughs> we are actually allowed to say the word cancer. And I know that it has affected very uh, many of you as well, either personally or, 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 or to people in your circle of friends or family. And I just wanted to say how much all your comments and messages and everything that you uh, did for me um, in terms of reaching out um, in those first couple of weeks um, really meant a lot to me and really, really got me through um, a, a very difficult couple of weeks. My dad, um, I'm not going to say too much on it, but um, he, 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 the cancer that he has is not curable. Um, he has come home now and he is going to be starting some treatment, which we are hoping will um, buy some time. So it's been a bit of a difficult month, but it has got easier and it's good to see my dad at home being, you know, himself and preparing for the treatment that's going to be coming up. And it's going to be a long haul, I think. In addition to that, I sat down to podcast last Saturday. Today is Saturday, so a whole week ago. And... Uh, I had already not been feeling particularly well and I got halfway through filming a podcast before I realised that I was too dizzy and unwell and had to go to bed where I stayed until pretty much Wednesday. <laughs> so I've had some awful um, virus which has knocked me just sideways, just completely knocked me for six. I am not very good at being ill. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of complaining on my part and my husband's had to pretty much take over everything. So we're only just getting back on an even keel for that. And to be honest, I'm still not feeling 100%, which is why today I'm all concealer and fringe. <laughs> this is hiding a lot. <laughs> so and that's why I'm slightly further away from the camera. You don't want to get too close up in HD to me at the moment. So I've been very unwell, but I am on the mend. Now, so yes, but my main thing I wanted to say was a massive thank you to everyone. Your support meant more than I can ever put into words because I'm rubbish at putting those things into words. So thank you. <sighs> Moving on, let's start with finished objects. I have eight finished objects. When I sat down a week ago, I had six and then two of my whips turned into finished objects over the course of the week because I was in bed and on the in the time I wasn't sleeping and just moaning and feeling sorry for myself, um, I worked on some projects and got some finished. So we're going to start with my Strictly socks. So I'm really in need of a cup of tea, which is why I keep slurping on this. Do it, excuse me. It is the podcast away. Um, this is my Little Drops of Wonderful mug. I can't remember if I showed it to you before. I painted it at a pottery painting place. My my girls were painting something I didn't want to be left out. So I made myself my very own podcasting mug. <sighs> Have I left anything out? No, I think it's going to be a long one today. Finished objects, Strictly socks. Actually, no, let's not start with my Strictly socks. We'll start with my um, Christmas Eve cast on socks because they happen to be on the sock blockers. So I finished these a couple of days ago and I have blocked them. And I this was for the Christmas Eve cast on that, that Danny of Little Bobbins runs every year. Um, I've decided I'm not going to do it next year because actually for me, casting something on on Christmas Eve is a nightmare. There's <laughs> too much going on. But we host Christmas at our house. So it's normally a bit frantic um, with lots of people arriving and uh, yeah, lots of food being prepared and Prosecco being popped and things. So yeah, I don't think a Christmas Eve cast on really works for me very well. But I did enjoy this a lot. In fact, I'll just show you, show it, show them to you. There are two. There you go. Um, so these are, let me, so you can see there's two. <laughs> and then I'll just show you the detail. So these are, um, the, the pattern is the towards the night before Christmas um, socks which is a pattern that Danny from Little Bobbins wrote. And it was a gift from lovely um, Lou, who is Foxy Yarn on Instagram. Um, she gifted it to me and I was really, really 
um, thrilled with that because I had been admiring that pattern and I didn't expect to, to get it as a gift. So thank you very much, Lou, for making it possible for me to knit these. Um, in fact, the pattern was so enjoyable and the yarn, this yarn is called Oh Christmas Tree and it's by Lay Family Yarns, lovely Kelly um, of Lay Family Yarns. Uh, and I bought this uh, last year and I absolutely loved it and I was enjoying the pattern and the yarn so much that I forgot to use the contrasting colour for the heel. I don't know where I've left it. I think I've left it in the other room. I'm not, not going to go and get it, but it's a beautiful grey sparkly colour that goes with it for contrasting heels and toes and cuffs. And I complete, I was enjoying it so much. And these are top down socks and I normally knit my socks toe up, but these are top down. And they've got a lovely little detail of um, Christmas trees that run down the leg and then you've got like a narrow trunk that runs down the foot. And I knit them two at a time, magic loop, using two millimetre needles, which meant I could cast on 64 stitches. I don't, usually if I knit with 2.25, I cast on 56 stitches, which makes me think I must be quite a loose knitter, possibly, I don't know. I knit continental, don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, but I do find I get a very nice um, uh, fabric, is that the right word? A nice tension with the two millimetre needles. And I enjoy knitting with them. They're like lace needles. They just, they're nice to hold. And yeah, I do like knitting with the two millimetre needles. And I seem to get quite a good fit with my socks when I knit with those. So I think they might be becoming my favourites. I might need to order some more two mil, two mil sizes. Um, where was I going with this? Right, so I knit them two at a time magic loop and I was enjoying them so much I completely forgot to um, use the contrast colour for the heels and toes which I was going to do and therefore was running out of yarn. So lovely Kelly, when I mentioned this on Instagram, sent me some emergency yarn. So thank you Kelly, you saved the day. And then I kind of panicked and thought, well, what? Because there were obviously different dye lots. So I'll show you what I did. So first of all, I started striping the new yarn with the original yarn, which I did on this sock, which started to cause, so up here it kind of does its own natural narrow striping almost. And then when I started to um, uh, alternate them, alternate the two schemes, I got, I didn't think about it properly and I got wider stripes. Not really noticeable, doesn't really bother me. But when I did the second sock, um, I, because um, I split them into two, so when because I was about here when I ran out, so then I just knit them. I just took one off and put them on DPNs, put them to put it to one side, and knit the other one by itself because I didn't want to get all messed up with new yarn and old yarn and two lots of socks and stuff. So I just finished them individually, still knitting Magic Loop. So when I did the second sock, I just finished with the yarn I had and then joined in the new scheme. And this is just a testament to Kelly's dying in that you can't really tell where the new dye lot starts. Quite impressive. So and um, overall, you can see that the striping here is wider where I was alternating. I hope all that makes sense. Anyway, basically brilliant pattern, gorgeous yarn. Kelly's a brilliant dyer and she's genius. And she's also very generous. And I've got enough left of the old Christmas tree yarn to either make another pair of shorty socks or something else. But I'm in the mood for spreading the love, paying it forward. So I might send it to someone else or make something with it to send to someone else. I don't know. But I feel like being generous because Kelly was so generous to me and maybe sharing the love of lay family yarn. Speaking of lay family yarn, my next finished object, I'll just take these off, off the lockers. I can wear those now, that's quite exciting. And the good thing about this pattern and this yarn is, although it's all Christmassy, it doesn't have to be Christmassy. You could wear those all year round and I probably will. Because what's the point in putting things away and not wearing them? So my next finished object are my Strictly socks. And I wore these a bit on Christmas day, so I'm gonna have to be careful about how I show them to you. <laughs> Don't want you to show you the grubby side. I think, <laughs> let me just check. <laughs> yep, 
yeah, these are fine. So for my Strictly socks, I also use Lay Family yarn. Just gonna have another slurp of my tea. Um, oh, by the way, as well, uh, it's a travel mug, so it has no handle, and it's lovely because you can just clutch your tea like this. I like to warm my hands on my tea. So, my Strictly socks are also made with Lay Family yarn, and this is a colour that Kelly dyed up specifically for Strictly. It is called Salsa, and it is inspired by the dance that Mark Ramprakash did with Karen Hardy quite a few years ago. I believe it was the one where they got tangled up. If you Google, if you go onto YouTube and, and type in um, Karen Hardy, Mark Ramprakash, Salsa, I'm pretty sure it was the one where they got tangled up and they had to start again. It was very exciting. And the, um, the, 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 the contrasting colour is called Glitter Ball. Can't seem to get my words out today. Da da da. The contrasting colour is called Glitter Ball and it's all glittery and the beautiful pattern, that textured pattern that you can see, which I absolutely love, is the Spellbound Socks by Naomi of Cozy Cute Knits. And that was a gift. Naomi gifted that to me when I was looking for my Strictly Socks pattern. So thank you, Naomi. And the yarn was a gift too, because Kelly gifted it to me when I first announced I was going to do the sock along. So yeah, I'm a lucky girl. And I love these. These were knit... Oh, if you haven't watched before, you will know that I never remember to bring in my sock notebook where I write down all the details of my knitting of socks so that I can tell you, and I always forget it. But I can tell you I knit them concurrently on short circular needles, which were chowgoos. Now chowgoos are about, I get all my needles from eBay or Amazon, and they're about eight pounds for one um, short circular. So 25 centimeter, and I think they were 2.25 millimeters, or they might be two remember I'll put it on the screen and uh, I ordered one pair to see if I like them and initially I didn't but the more I use them the more I like them I don't know if they have like an initial coating on them or they need to warm up or something before they're easier to knit with but I really liked them in the end so I was knitting one sock on the chargoos and one sock on just an, a normal short circular addy that I had in the same size just for the these are toe up just for the first little bit and then when I established that I did like the chargoos I ordered another pair because uh, I didn't want to have two pairs and find out they didn't really like them because eight pounds is quite a lot and I like to have two pairs of short circular needles that match so that I can knit my socks concurrently when I do do them on short circular because I do like to knit short circular I find it relaxing so yeah my Strictly Socks really pleased with those really love the colour um, I always do my um, and uh, that my leg part fairly short because I wear skinny jeans and I like to have them either fit just underneath my jeans or sometimes I'll have them over the top of my jeans just so they poke just the top, just, just poke a little bit out the top of my boots is what I'm trying to say. So that is my second finished object. I also finished another pair of socks before Christmas but I don't have them with me because my eldest daughter is currently wearing them. They are very very thick warm socks and they are called the snowfall socks and I will put a picture either over my face or next to me. The snowfall socks which is um, a pattern that is uh, a tutorial pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Now I signed up to become a Patreon of the bakery bears just so I could get that pattern. <laughs> uh, so she shows you, it's a video tutorial of how to do them and she uses super chunky on. So they came out really well and I think I knit those in like two evenings. They were so easy and I'm gonna make some more. Uh, and my daughter loves them. So that's my other finished object. I also, for somebody else, made the sock head hat. So I made this, am I saying so a lot? I'm a bit out of practice. I'm probably saying er uh, and so and scratching my head or doing things like that. If I am, I'm sorry. I'm about to mess up my hair too. So this is the sock head hat that I made for my husband. And I loved making this. Absolutely loved it. I don't know why, but it really got me not minding pearls, basically. There's a couple of projects I've been working on that have really got me to practice my purling. And um, this was knit 
in the round I got a 40 centimeter um, circular needle and the yarn I dyed myself because um, he knew the kind of colors that he wanted I think it looks like um, camouflage it's a bit too camouflage but uh, he really likes it and the colors are nice and the yarns nice so you knit this really long section here of uh, rib and then you just knit until it's floppy enough really so I would have had it slightly less floppy for me but he did want it quite floppy so here we go let's show you let's mess up my hair it's quite hard when you've got a fringe so that stands it's been stretched by his massive heed he wasn't this baggy on me before <laughs> so there you go and he actually wears it um because he's got quite a a round head and he looks a bit funny if he has just the rib um, flat down on his head. Let me just sort out my fridge. Don't want to reveal any wrinkles. <laughs> um, so he actually wears the um, cuff folded like that and it looks really nice when he does that. So yeah, so that's the sock head hat and I'm going to be making another one of those. It's a brilliant way to use um, a nice skein of yarn and it's really comfortable to wear and it was really fun to, to knit. I did a lot of practicing of knitting without looking with this as well. I was quite impressed with myself. So that's the sock head hat. Oh, and that is a pattern by Kelly McClure on Ravelry and it's a free pattern. Um, and it's knit just using a uh, four ply, four ply on. My next pattern, my next pattern, my next finished object is not for me, it's a gift. I'm not saying who for and I can never remember which way round these go so I'm just going to put them on so these are little mittens really cute oh there's a little thread sticking out there never mind I just don't know about it. I don't know what job so these are called the sky rim mittens I believe sky rim, rim might be a uh, computer game possibly and the pattern is by Becky Robbins it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's knit using arrow weight yarn and this is them I love them I just love them so much they've got this um, what's the name of this stitch again oh it's completely left my mind what this stitch is called I want to say crunch granite 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 stitch it's called granite, it's got granite stitch there and on the thumb and on the wrist and they sit just like that and they are perfect. She's got a picture on her pattern for when you're having your morning cup of coffee or tea or maybe you're a bit chilly or maybe you're out in the garden just looking out at what the birds are doing or what the neighbours are doing and um, yeah they're absolutely perfect and I love them and I used some yarn for my stash which I've had forever which I bought at Loop in London uh, over a year ago now and it is Blue Sky Fibres um, wool stock and it is the colour is Earth Ivy and you get this is 50 grams it's 100% Highland wool and you get yada 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 it doesn't say oh 112 meters in 50 grams so I made these mittens out of one of these and I have this left there is about 23 grams left so I could in theory if I I could get another pair if I made them slightly smaller these are medium I could make them slightly smaller but they these fit me well and I have freakishly small hands and wrists so I hope the person I've made them for doesn't have freakishly freakishly big hands and wrists <laughs> as long as she's somewhere in between me and huge she should be all right because they fit me quite well so I'm going to make myself a pair too and then I should be able to get another pair out as a gift god I thought there was a spider on the table then it's just a bit of thread <gasps> oh that made me jump I've got to put that somewhere out of sight that really I thought there was a spider crawling across the table in front of the living daylights at me so yes the sky rim mittens by Becky Robbins free pattern on Ravelry really really nice little gift pattern really quick to make um 
yeah, really nice. I think I used 4.5 millimeter needles and I made the magic loop. If I did them again, I might do them two at a time, actually. Yeah. So they can now be packaged up and put in my parcel, ready to send. Now, my next finished object is a shawl, which I messed up and not messed up at the same time. This is a crocheted, uh, so everything I've shown you so far is knitted. Now we're on to the crochet. So, sorry, stop saying so. I made the crisscross shawl by Faye, who has the Crochet Circle podcast. She was talking about it in one of her podcasts. And I've only really recently started watching Faye's podcast. I, I was aware of it and I was, uh, yeah, I was aware of her and uh, never, uh, I, I just hadn't watched lots of them. So I'd gone back and watched like some earlier episodes and worked my way through. I've been really enjoying her podcast. Crochet is my first love and her podcast is very informative and very, very crochet orientated and very interesting. It's worth a watch. And I think she does it as an audio podcast as well. So you could just listen to it if you were like walking or on the bus or wherever. So I made her crisscross shawl. And I, the reason I did this was I, when in times of in bad times, <laughs> when in times of stress, the thing I turn to for the most comfort and the most relaxation is always crochet. And I needed something that I didn't have to worry about, that I could just follow a simple pattern in one colour. So I had a load of drops flora in dark grey, which I bought for another project for uh, my so faded sweater, uh, which I had to frog. Actually, where, where is my frogged so faded sweater? I think it might be. Tip. Got a missing project, I think. We'll have a look for it in a minute. So I was originally going to do that with one hand dyed skein of yarn and uh, strike it with dark grey. But then I decided not to do that and I ended up getting some more of the hand dyed yarn to fade with. So I had all this drops flora left. So I made the crisscross shawl, which is going to be incredibly hard to show you. Now the criss... Because <laughs> it's all grey. <laughs> what about if I put it in front of my yellow... Oh, there you go. You can maybe see a bit of the pattern there. Try and show you. It's got this lovely um, crochet crisscross. It's got three three little sections of crisscross inter intersectioned. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. With uh, half double crochets, and it's a crescent shawl. And I blocked it, <laughs> not as a crescent. So, I still love it, so it, it, this is the shape of my shawl. I blocked it almost as if it was a triangle, and it was really, I did think at the time, it was really difficult to block. <laughs> That's because I was blocking it to the wrong shape. It's supposed to be a crescent shawl. You're supposed to block out this hump at the top so that it becomes straight, and then it curves that way. So, do I keep it as it is? Because, let me show you, it's still lovely and warm. I intend to wear this when I go to unravel the weekend after next. And it's stylish and cosy and I love it. Or do I block it again? Can you block something again if you've already blocked something? Does the wall like be like, for the love of God, just leave me alone. <laughs> just, just stop blocking me. You've already blocked me and that's why I'm gonna, you know, that's why I'm gonna stay. What am I talking about? Basically, I'm saying, does wool have feelings? <laughs> Will it object to being blocked again? Right. <sighs> well, I think my camera equipment <laughs> decided it had enough of my nonsense and threw itself on the table. <laughs> the mirror behind my camera fell over, I think, because I was tapping the table and then knocked everything flying. We were okay, we survived. What was I saying? Should I re-block it? So I'm quite happy with it, but I have blocked it to the wrong shape. Shall I re-block it? Is it even possible to re-block something you've already blocked? It's 100% uh, alpaca, I think. I think drops four is 100% alpaca, not sure. It's 100% 
natural fibres anyway. 100% some kind of wool. So that's my crisscross shawl. Absolutely love this pattern, by the way, by, uh, by Faye. It was a free pattern. If you go to Ravelry and find the crisscross shawl, it takes you to an Irish craft magazine called Olan, I think. And it's on the, the patterns on there. I did lose count a bit here and then. But that was a good thing about working on a crochet thing when I was feeling stressed was that it didn't matter. I can With crochet, I can be like, doesn't matter. I can fudge it. Doesn't matter. With knitting, I feel like I have to be more precise because I'm not as uh, confident with it. Okay. One more crochet item to show you. And these are also mittens. And I made these for the uh, One Scheme Wonderland count that was run. It was hosted by Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast and uh, Charlie of Love Charlie Crochet. I think it's got a podcast on YouTube too. Um, yeah, Love Charlie. And it was to use a one skein of yarn from your stash. So I had one skein in quite an unusual state in that I had halved it. It was a DK skein of yarn and I had halved it back in June and dyed one half of it with the skins of passion fruit and one half with the seeds. And I made a video about it and I put it in episode, can't remember. So on the screen, I will put the episode it's in. So if you wanna see the vlog, which shows you the process of dyeing the yarn, and I'll put a link in the show notes as well. Please don't fall down. Okay, I'll put a link in the show notes as well because I made a video about the process I went through to naturally dye this yarn with those two things that we had um, excess of in my garden. So these are the mittens. They are the Bella Brick Wristers and it's a pattern by Kinga Erden. Um, it's, a D, it's for DK weight and I believe this it was a free pattern on Ravelry as well. So the dark colour that you can see, the sort of brownie colour, that was dyed with the seeds, the bright red seeds inside the passion fruit. And the yellow was dyed with the skins. I was most surprised by the colour from the skins actually because when I was boiling up the skins to get some you know, colour, uh, I didn't think it was going to dye the yarn at all. It was such a weak colour. I was quite surprised it came out quite so yellow. Yeah, so and I thought they worked quite well. And the stitch is really interesting as well. That stitch looks like knit stitch, but it's actually done by working into the back loop, uh, not the back loop, but uh, uh, the back back loop, <laughs> right at the back of um, half double crochets. Half, not half, Half double crochets in US terms, half trebles in UK terms. Yeah, and these are really nice. And the I don't, it's something about the stitch uh, really hugs your wrists and your hands, so they feel very, very snug and secure. Not like they're gonna give. Um, I would imagine this would be quite a nice stitch for making socks, actually, because they have quite good stretch going that away, and they have quite good stretch going that away. So I might try and make some, I'm not a big fan of crochet socks. I've never, I did try to make some once, but they were four ply and there was a, I did find it quite tedious and I wasn't very pleased with the result and they didn't fit very well. And it seemed like a lot of effort for something that I wasn't, you know, I frogged it in the end. But yeah, maybe there was a really good supplement with the Simply Crochet this month. It was a Ron, Ron Strong sock supplement which I found quite interesting. I had a lot of information about making crochet socks in there, so I might have a look through that and see if I might be able to adapt something to make it in this stitch. They'd be very thick socks though. It's a very squidgy stitch. Yeah, so that, I'm really pleased with those and I've entered those into the One Scheme Wonderland cow. And then my final finished object at last is the simple eyelet shawl. I had problems blocking this as well. I've had a lot of problems with blocking things recently. And this is made using one skein of Louisa Harding Amitola yarn. And I picked up this yarn when I was at City Knits in Birmingham in last summer. 
it's not called City. They're, they're, they're City Knits 2 on Instagram, but I think in, in their bricks and mortar shop is called Christine's Wool Shop. It's in Bourneville in Birmingham. And I picked it up because they had a sample shawl. And I thought, oh, my mum would love that. These are really my mum's colours. So this is it. And it's just, a, it's just exactly what it says. It's a simple eyelet shawl. Um, I think I lost count quite a bit on this as well, but it didn't really matter. You just stick, keep going. And I had only the most minuscule amount left by the time I got to the end. I had that amount left. Teeny tiny. So I timed it just right. My mum loves these autumnal colours and she loves purple. So this is going to be for her birthday in uh, April. So I'm feeling very smug about that. That I've already got something off the needles for her birthday in April. April, March and April is birthday season in our family. So there you go. It's just a little and it's ever so soft. It's, it is, hand wash only, but what are you made of? Ah, oh, 80% wool and 20% silk. Yeah, so it's very, very soft, very drapey, perfect. And we're going to Cornwall for my mum's birthday. She's 70 this year. So uh, we're going to Cornwall for my mum's birthday. So... And that'll be at the end of March, so that'll be nice time of year to wear it. Mind you, if the weather's anything like it was last year, it was absolutely scorching. We were on the beach in our swimsuits for half of it. It was amazing. That was only in April last year. Oh, that was a nice holiday. <sighs> and that's been living in my little me-made dodgy bag. And... On this bag, I've got a cute little watermelon thing that I got in the sale at Sainsbury's and a new addition, which is my Yan Tan Tadara Yarns Sock Knitter Pin. Yay! I saw these on Instagram. Can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Caroline Love to, Loves to Sew had one. And I was, I was like, oh, I have to buy one immediately. And I think I bought three because <laughs> I wanted to give, I gave one to my sister for her birthday. And one to a, a friend as well. So that is all of my finished objects. So now we are going to move on to a whip review. So we're going to have a look at my current works in progress and we're going to have a look at some of my languishing works in progress and decide what to do about them. So my first current work in progress I've been working on this week because what could it be? <laughs> What is it? <laughs> uh, because I've been at home on the sofa and it takes quite a lot of thought and construction. Can you guess what it is yet? Oh, that was terrible. Doesn't look like much yet, does it? <laughs> Let me see if I can put it here. So, eventually this is going to be a fox head. I will show you what it looks like. I'm making this from this book, which my sister bought me for my birthday in April. It is Animal Heads, Trophy Heads to Crochet. And it is a book by Vanessa Muzzi. And I am making the fox. The fox is quite big, actually. So I can only imagine how massive that zebra must be. Look, this is the this is the fox, it's bigger than my head. And look, it's like half the size of that zebra. Blimey, I might have to make the zebra. This, I, my sister bought this for me. I don't think I would have bought it for myself. She wants a fox to scare off foxes. My sister keeps her animals in her garden. She's got rabbits and chickens and guinea pigs and things like that. And she, this is going to be hung over the in the, in the shed over the guinea pigs cage as a warning to all foxes. But I do find the concept of crocheting animal trophy heads slightly weird. <laughs> Why would you want an animal head? There's, there's even a pattern here for like a swan. Isn't that like treason <laughs> to have like a swan on your wall? <laughs> and tiny little mice, the poor little mice. They're just heads. I feel bad for them, even though they're not real. Anyway, this is going to be a fox. He needs his ears. I've started on his ears. He needs his eyes, um, and then he has all this huge chest fur thing. I'm a bit stuck, to be honest. Hang on, I forgot that I wanted to say this. So, 
for the chest fur I, I've kind of had to stop and I may have to email the designer because the instructions are for the second row one chain make scallop make scallop miss next set of two make three scallops but nowhere does it tell you how to make the scallops now there is a chart for the I wish I won't show you because obviously it's a book uh, there is a chart for the chest fur but I can't read charts so I still don't know what that means make scallop I'm confused so and the rest of the book has the charts and the text instructions as well so I don't know I've looked all through it I can't find anything about special stitches might have to have another look through yeah very confusing there's also this whole section when you're doing the base this was just this drove me bananas this did so when you, you do the base which is the circle at the back you're just basically making a circle it's not hard but the instructions for the base where is it? So the base. It says rounds 1 to 18. Follow the instructions and chart for rounds 1 to 18 for the base of the swan on page 87. Okay, that's no problem. So you go to page 87 to find the instructions to make the base for the swan. And it says base, rounds 1 to 11. Work rounds 1 to 11 of the head. So then you have to write, okay, I'll go and find the head of the swan now. So you flick, flick back a bit until you... Go to the head and you think, okay, here's the head. So now I've got to work rounds one to 11 of the head. Head, for rounds one to three, work rounds one to three of the bill. Okay, so now you've got to go and find the bill. <laughs> and then eventually you get to the start of the pattern. And it is just a circle, so they, uh, yeah, that just drove me slightly bananas. I didn't know why that had to be quite so complicated. But otherwise, as a, as a pattern, it's, brilliantly written there's been no er i haven't found any real er well actually no that's not true i did find a couple of errors but yeah as a pattern i have managed to construct something fairly complicated without m many problems let me let me say and um yeah it's, it's been fun but it's a lot of concentrating when you come to putting things together and sewing it right and then getting everything put on it is a lot to concentrate on it's a lot of it's a Labour of love, and that's going to be for my sister when it's finished. I should have probably warned my sister not to watch that bit. Sorry, Jenny. It's not a surprise, you've asked for it. <laughs> so, but sorry, it still doesn't look like a fox. So if I talk about it when it does look like a fox, um, I'll tell you to look away. What am, I, where am I, what am I on about? Anyway, that's all living, or it was living before it got too big to live, in my Oso oh Lily bag, which has got little sheeps on it. Little checkered sheeps. And this was a bag that she gifted me when I first started my podcast. Thank you, Zoe. I've been using that ever since for that fox. So that's one work in progress. And the other work in progress that I have on the go. So this is my advent shawl. I did an advent swap with Lily of the Nordic Stitches podcast. And I also did a little mini Christmas swap with Sarah who is Sarah One Daisy on Instagram and I got some uh, yarn from those swaps and I wanted to make something I could work on every day during Advent when I opened them so I started to make a triangular shawl which is actually a pattern for chunky yarn or Aran weight yarn anyway much chunkier than what I'm using which is four ply and it's a pattern by Sarah Shrimpton who is Anna Boo's house it's a free pattern on her blog and I think it's called the Granny Wrap I'm pretty sure. So I'm just using that pattern and just using the yarn I've got. So this is how it's looking. So it's basically looking amazing. And I've just put every mini in every day that I got it. So you can see it's wider at the top because I only had a little bit to do and then it widens out. It's almost big enough I'll explain the rattling in a minute. It's almost big enough to wear it as a shawl but not quite. It needs more to it. And besides, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm going to add more. Every Sunday, Lily included a stitch marker. So she got me, she included the butterfly. And then this one I love, she made this one. It's a little pine cone. 
And then what you can hear rattling is a little sleigh bell. And then down here, there's one. I'm not going to be able to get that to hang the right way, but it says um, Merry Christmas in Norwegian. And then we go into the ones that Sarah gave me. So she, I'm going to see if I can get that to turn around. So where the, play ball, come on. So where that pineapple is, where's the pineapple? Oh anyway, the last few colours are from Sarah. And there's a pineapple and a little glitter ball and a starfish. <laughs> and those last few are from Sarah and they are beautiful as well. So I've been very, look at all these colours. So this is what I've had the pleasure to work on all through Advent and Christmas. And I've also got my minis from the Little French Meadow Mini Club from December, which I'm going to add into this. I've got them here. Yeah, so it was the December Mini Skin Club and the two yarns are called Silent Night and All Is Calm. All is bright. So those are going to go in to. Uh, I don't even know if they're focusing. Hang on a minute. Hang on. They're so pretty. So they're going to go in as well. So that'll add some length to it. And then I'm going to see what I think and see if it needs any more added to it. And um, if I think it does, I might actually save it and put advent minis from this year's Christmas into it because I love it so much and it's got so many I just loved working on it I've loved the I love the way it looks I love the way it throws up um, color combinations you wouldn't normally think of I love the way it shows you how yarns work up in crochet and sometimes the colours that I'm drawn to, I'm surprised by. Like, I'm like, oh, I didn't think those are my colours. But apparently, you know, I find that I really enjoyed working with them. And I'm just using a 3.25mm hook for those. So I've really enjoyed that. And it could be a pretty long-term work in progress if I do save it to work on for another advent. My other current work, on pro work in progress is... I've not done a lot on it but it is it was a gift this was a gift from um Lorraine who is the real made in England on Instagram and I wasn't sure if she was okay with me mentioning that she bought it for me but she messaged me to say yes of course she can so thank you very much Lorraine she gifted me this pattern and I was absolutely thrilled because it's by Hannah of Hannah from Sheep's Alley and it's her ragdoll's favorite shawl this is two examples of it knit up on the pattern. And you can do it quite harmonious with just a few colours or you can do it um, with minis, you know, just make it a riot of colour. I am using a, a colour wheel, a four ply colour wheel by The Knitting Goddess and it's a set of 12 schemes. That's the label. And the colourway is stones and it is a, oh, it's a hot potch of, it's 40% British Blue Face Esther, 20% British Wednesday Dale, 20% British Alpaca and 20% Nylon. It's a little bit itchy, but I think it will soften up. And I do, I don't know, I don't mind itchy. I quite like rustic. So there's 12 and I've numbered all of them. I've worked out what, what order they're going in. And I've started, I'm nearly, nearly at the end of the first bit and it's almost impossible to show you this. <laughs> that's a, but that's how much I've done. And then as you change colour, there's a um, a textured section that you do. And this is all living in my beautiful, I haven't even taken the tag off because I'm pretending it's still brand new, <laughs> in my beautiful Caroline Loves to Sew bag. And this was a gift from my husband, a, a very surprise gift. I wasn't expecting it at all. He's not, he's not Mr. Romance. Um, it was a gift for my husband for our anniversary. And this button really tickled my um, youngest daughter because she'd been watching Caroline's podcast with me. And she had said in her podcast that she really likes her buttons, so she's always got to put a button on. And when I said to Phoebe that this was from that lady, she was like, oh, that's why it's got a button on it, because she loves her buttons. <laughs> she remembers these things, you see. So that's my other current work in progress, but I haven't... Been working on it much at the moment because I've been doing my 
gift knitting and all of the things I've just shown you. I'm working on a jumper, a sweater. Actually, it's neither, it's a top, it's a sleeveless top. It's a Seardar pattern, which I also picked up when we went to City Knits in Birmingham last summer. And the reason I got this is because in the shop they had this very sample in this yarn, in this colour, on a uh, dressmaker's mannequin in the shop. And my eldest daughter just thought that was, it was so pretty. She absolutely loved it. And they didn't have the colourway in the shop, so I bought the pattern, but I had to order the colourway from Wool Warehouse. And I've been working, it's, it's knitting two panels, front and back, and then you do, uh, you seam them, and then you do some little, the little sleeves. So I'm doing an adult size extra small, because although she's tall, my daughter, she's skinny, like a bean pole. So I've done this much so far. Just throw my yarn on the floor. It's, yeah, it's not setting me on fire, <laughs> the yarn. It's, a, it's cotton, it's Sirdar Toscana. It's 100% cotton, DK. DK is a good part because it does work up quite quickly. And the colour, I don't think it has a colour name, it's shade 115. Yeah, 100% cotton. So I've got enough to do the whole jumper for her. She loves it. And her birthday's at the end of March. So I'm hoping to have this done uh, for her. There is a lot of knots in this yarn and it is cotton and it is slippery. So when I come across a knot, I am untying the knot and then doing that knot where you sort of tie one knot a little bit down and one knot and then you pull them and the two knots go together. But I'm leaving the ends as well so I can weave in the ends because I can't work out the best way to do a knot in cotton that's not gonna untie. So I'm just trying to cover all bases and make sure it doesn't come undone. And there is quite a lot of knots in it, so I'm hoping that's not going to affect the way the colour fades, but she'll still love it. Yeah, so that's my other work in progress. And this is living in my beautiful, also a gift, which is, I'm very spoiled. I am spoiled. I'm a spoiled brat. Beautiful. Betsy makes. There's her little tag. Sam, lovely Sam, who's Betsy Makes and has the Betsy Makes podcast. She sent me this as a gift and it's got lobsters on it because I love lobsters. And because I love lobsters, on the other side of this bag, I have pinned another gift. <laughs> See? Spoiled brat. Which is a little Fimo lobster brooch. And this was made for me by an Instagram friend, Kaylee. And she is Shadows at Midnight Knits on Instagram. She sent this to me ages ago. So I thought my lobster bag needed a lobster brooch. So that's living in there. Right, let's just check. Adventure, yes, Lilia's jumper, yes, Ragdoll's favourite, yes. And then I've got next on my list, everything else. Everything else in my whip palm. Now I pulled everything out that's not whips, is it? Now that's kind of planned, planned stuff. We might work, we might go through that next time, otherwise we're gonna be here for hours. Is everyone okay? Anyone need to need a comfort break <laughs> or anything like that? I, you can pause me if you want. I could adopt a flattering uh, pose and then you could pause me to go and get a cup of tea. So I could be like, Hmm. Hmm. Don't pause me doing this. You're all going to pause me doing that now. Anyway, moving on to works in progress, which are not current works in progress, which are basically just sitting around being ignored and with me going la 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 la. So this is everything. I've just gathered everything. And the first thing is living in this bag. Now, it's been living in this bag so long that I don't get to use this bag as often as I would like because I'm not working on the work in progress and it's all living in here, taking up room. I made this out of beautiful lobster fabric and I love it and it's got bright pink zip and the lining is an organic cotton lining. And in here I have been making a blanket, well I've been making the elements of a blanket using minis. So 
this was my version of the crozy oh my goodness we're in a mess of the oh, of the crozy memories blanket the cozy memories blanket so the knitted cozy memories blanket Lorraine Pugh of Lorraine Pugh Designs designed the Crozy Memories Blanket, which was squares made using crochet. And they, they, they formed like little sort of three inch squares. But I kept going with mine and my plan was to make four huge squares and then crochet them together to make one big crazy blanket. So this is one of my squares. This, this, this is nowhere near the size it would need to be. So I'll just put that there. And then this is another one of my squares. So I'll put that there. And then the other two are looking like this, so they need to grow. And the idea would be that I would then, this is gonna be impossible to show you, but I would then seam them together in a square to make one big crazy colored blanket. And I have anchored the colors at certain points. So the middle square will, the middle square will use this same yarn and then every uh, even points on each square they're going to have the same yarn so you will get these points where the yarn matches but everything else will be a mishmash however i have not worked on this in forever because it's quite slow going because it's all single crochet which is uk double crochet and i keep forgetting what i need to do at the end of each row and i do have to count quite a lot to check that i haven't gone off um count with it otherwise it, the square wouldn't be square it would go wonky i'm also not entirely convinced that i like how the colors sit together when i do them like that so here's one and i am trying to avoid putting anything too dark in there and here's another one i really like this one this is, and i've got a lot of minis in here which lovely himiko of um Himiko no Sakai on Instagram sent me when I first started podcasting and I didn't have much yarn or any minis and she sent me this little box just stuffed full of minis and they're beautiful and a lot of them are in this square and I love them so much but I don't love the project. I love the idea of the project but I think maybe working on this has made me realise how much you can love a project and how relaxing something can be rather than having to ever worry about counting or losing count. So I don't know now whether to keep going or rip out all of this work and start something else. And I don't really want to start a granny stripe. The thing is, when, when, when lots of people are doing something, I automatically don't want to... It sounds really stupid because I look at things like the granny stripe blankets and I think they look amazing. So why wouldn't I make one just because other people... It, it's like I have, to, I have to have this period of like, no, I will not jump on that bandwagon, I won't do it. And then eventually I go, okay, I'm going to jump on that bandwagon because actually it's a really good idea and there's a reason why it's a bandwagon because it's fabulous. I don't know. So I don't know what to do. Do I frog and change it to something else and work out why all this yarn is tangled up? Or do I keep going with my original plan? What do I do? I don't know. I'm undecided. I think I need to get this out and lie it on the floor and think, right, how much love is this going to get? Because it can't, like, it's been over a year. That's too long. And that yarn's not getting used or looked at, and that's not good. Help. What do I do? Crazy memories blanket or granny stripe or I don't know, a corner to corner blanket or I don't know. What should I do with it? Tell me. Another triangle thing, which could just be a huge triangular blanket, which might not be the best shape of a blanket. So that's something I need to make a decision about. Okay, the next thing I was talking about on Instagram yesterday um and i've talked about before about three years ago possibly more than three years ago this is all living in just an old cat kids and oilcloth bag um i started to make little two round granny squares and put them in a sandwich bag out of all my leftover acrylic yarn so when i first started crocheting i used only acrylic yarn and i still do use acrylic yarn for some things and 
whenever I finished something or I had just little bits of stuff left, uh, they would go into one of two places. First of all, if I had enough, they would be made into two round granny squares. Let's get one out to show you. So just little two round granny squares. Oh, that's not a good colour to show you. Let's get a colour that likes the camera a bit more. So little two round granny squares, just like that. Probably not a good example to show you either because that looks a bit weird. That one. Anyway. So I'd make some of those and then anything else that was either the wrong, wasn't DK, different weight, or wasn't quite enough of, or for whatever reason, would go into the ugly blanket, which is this. So I've been making this for years. Every time I've got any yarn that's a little bit unloved, isn't going to go into any other project, there's only a little bit of it, it's all mainly acrylic, although there is some wool in there, um, it just goes in here. I'm sure it's going to fall apart one day because I'm not sure how good the three year ago self, me, me three years ago, oh, there's a magpie outside. Where's your mate? Oh, I hate it. I know I've spoken about this before. But I really hate it when I see just one magpie he's drinking out of the gutter. Oh, he's flying right. For oh, he's tormenting me. I hate it when I see just one magpie. Hate it. I think it. Oh, he's back. Either that or it's his mate. Oh, I don't know. My friend always used to say, yeah, but you saw him with both eyes, so it's okay. Hmm. I might have to crochet myself two magpies so that it cancels out whenever I see one magpie. <laughs> Oh, they're bad omen, aren't they? Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so th this is the ugly blanket, which I'm now not allowed to call the ugly blanket because Phoebe says it has to be called the lovely blanket. So I've got some stuff um, ready to go into the lovely blanket here, just some um, old yarn, acrylic yarn that's not really going to be used for anything else. And I bought, I've um, balled it all up and tied it together. And yeah, so I've got some stuff there to go in. And. Where was I? Oh, yeah. so the, with the two round granny squares, I would then get just some white acrylic and I invented my own little granny square design. I was talking to my husband about this this morning. So what I did was I create, so all of my squares are nearly knocked you over, are, are the same. So what, no matter what the colour, I surround it with the same makeup of white, which looks like this. Okay, so this is a little square I made up. So I was saying to my husband, I could do a tutorial for this. I did used to do some tutorials on my old blog. I don't, I don't know if I've mentioned before, but my, I used to blog a snip, snip snap happy on Blogspot. So if you Google snip snap happy, it'll come up. Um, and there's tutorials and things like a few little basic crochet tutorials. And I think there's a, a sewing thing for a Russian doll, a mattress, mat, 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 Russian doll. Um, so I could do a tutorial for it because I've kind of just made up this square. But how do you know you've made it up? Because I, I invented this granny square based on my knowledge of crochet, which is just really the same few stitches worked in different ways and different patterns. So how do you know if you've actually invented a granny square? How do you know this isn't a famous granny square that you've just never heard of? Anyway, I call it my multiplication square because it looks like a uh, multiplication symbol. I have 54 of these, well I did have yesterday, 54 of these completed and at least 50 more two round granny squares and I've been turning those two round granny squares into more finished granny squares. So I now currently have about 65 of these squares. And I put a thing out on Instagram saying because Rosina of the Zines and Roger podcast has got a granny cow running. So I was thinking this could be a good opportunity for me to do something with these squares, which I've had for three years, probably over three years. Something needs to be done with them. So I was like, what should I do? Should I make a bag? Should I make some cushions? Shall I make a blanket? Should I make a crazy granny square jumper? would that look like? Actually it wouldn't look too bad would it? So I laid them all out on the living room floor last night and when I saw them all laid out and the amount I had 
I actually, although this is going to sound boring because I was honestly erring towards the crazy granny square jumper. I really was. I still might do that, but I think I'm going to make a blanket and I'm going to call it my multiplication blanket and I'm going to write a tutorial for it. It's going to be a fairly simple tutorial for how to do the granny squares and then how I crochet them together to make a blanket. I think it will get the most use doing it that way. I need to get some more white acrylic. I can't even remember the last time I bought white acrylic now because I've only got a little bit. And I've only got to do, it, it takes me maybe 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes to, to finish off the two round granny square. So yeah, maybe about eight minutes to do a square. So I can do a few a day and before you know it, I will have enough to make the blanket. And then I need to decide whether I put them together randomly or, you know, as randomly with, with balance or if I put them together in stripes of the matching colours. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a blanket and I'm going to write a tutorial for it. I do have a blog attached to this YouTube channel called Little Jobs Are Wonderful, which I originally just started to put the show notes in, but I've never used. So I need to work out how to use it because it's on WordPress and I'm used to Bogspot. So I need to work that out. Very strange noise outside. It's probably that magpie coming to haunt me. Yeah, so I need to work that out and then I will take pictures and I will write a tutorial and I'm going to make this into a blanket. There you go, that's the decisiveness for you. Okay, that's it for part one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm now going to go and finish editing and uploading part two. So that should be ready for your viewing pleasure soon. So don't forget to check back again uh, to find out about the results of the Strictly Sock Along, find out about my new giveaway and other exciting crochet, knitty, yarny stuff. See you in part two.